Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to a roundup of some of the news stories that have caught my eye over the last few days from the world of Formula One. Kicking us off then is a story that began circulating today and that is that Williams looks set to be taking on a second pay driver for 2018. According to a report by Germany's Auto Build, Williams are set to announce Sergei Sorotkin as their second driver alongside Lance Stroll for the upcoming season. It is expected that the 22-year-old Russian, who is of course heavily backed financially, will sign a two-year deal with the midfield outfit. This would of course then end Robert Kubica's hopes of a dramatic return to Formula 1, but some believe the decision is still not made and is very much in the balance. However, 1997 Formula 1 world champion Jacques Villeneuve appears unimpressed but is not surprised by the team's decision. The Canadian said, They already sold their soul to the billions of Lawrence Stroll who only cares about his son. Even Massa was faster than Lance. His podium in Baku does not convince me as it was pure luck. If these reports are correct and Williams are set to confirm Sorotkin, there are going to be a lot of disappointed Robert Kubica fans out there and fans of Formula 1 in general, some of whom have begun the hashtag support Kubica. What do you think of this potential decision and who would you prefer to see racing for Williams in 2018? Let me know in the comment section down below. The Nürburgring has begun discussions with F1 bosses over a possible return to the calendar in 2019. Liberty Media is also said to be keen to keep the European races on the calendar as shown by the return of the French Grand Prix for this coming season. The Nürburgring's Chief Executive Officer Mirko Markfort told Autosport, we really would appreciate to have Formula 1 back at the Nürburgring in 2019. This will only be possible if we take meaningful economic surrounding conditions into consideration. We are able to confirm that there had been conversations with the owner of Formula 1, Liberty Media. However, the German circuit would face tough competition should it try to return to Formula 1 following claims by F1's Sean Bratches that there had been as many as 40 potential venues expressing an interest in joining the calendar. It is also widely believed that Liberty Media would initially prefer to secure a second race within the United States before another in Europe. Honda believe that F1's move to a limit of three engines per season will protect the advantage held by Mercedes and Ferrari. They also believe that the new restrictions are counterproductive and that they could impact heavily on performance as well as limiting in-season development. Yusuke Hasegawa said, It's very tough. It's not just for us. Renault had difficulties. I don't think it's reasonable. From a technical point of view, it's too difficult. If we save the engine performance, it's easy to achieve. If we use 2,000 RPM lower, of course we can finish races, but there's no point. We have discussed it many times. They strongly oppose it. With three engines, it means we would only have two chances to introduce a new engine. We need to introduce a good engine at the start, but if we don't, we only have two chances to introduce a new one. Reducing cost is important, but F1 is a technical challenge. Unless we can prove something better, there is no meaning to stay in Formula 1. Of course, as we know, Honda have struggled for reliability and performance over the last three years in Formula 1, but the Japanese outfit will be hoping to make strides forward in 2018 as they enter into their new partnership with Toro Rosso. Sticking with engines and FIA President Jean Todd has floated the idea that Formula 1 could use a global engine in the future. Now, back in 2009, a proposal was put forward that suggested a base engine could be adapted and used across as many as 11 major motorsport series. However, the proposal came to nothing due to concerns regarding costs and practicality from many of the potential series and from engine manufacturers themselves. However, Jean Todd has suggested that the FIA could revisit the idea. He said, Probably what we should say, which is not easy as well, is could we use this engine in other categories of motorsport? At the moment, each category of motorsport has its own single regulation, so probably we should try to see if we can have some synergies. The FIA president did name the WEC LMP1 class as a potential candidate due to F1's move toward more durable engines, making them potentially more practical for endurance racing. Todd went on to say, We have the endurance championship with LMP1. We have completely different engines, so it would make sense to anticipate a future for the endurance championship using this synergy, which incidentally is covering the same kind of mileage. However, according to motorsport.com, the global engine proposal has not yet been formally put forward to LMP1 teams. And finally, Toro Rosso driver Pierre Gazzi has had his say on the current negativity that surrounds the world of Formula 1 and has asked for more positivity. Gazzi said, Formula 1 is a great series and people should be more positive. I don't want to talk negative about Formula 1 because I think there are way too many people who are talking about it in a negative way. It is a great series, great cars and people should be more positive about it. However, the 21-year-old did push criticism on F1's current engine penalty system. I am going to adapt the quote slightly though. He added, it is definitely one of the points that are a bit rubbish in F1. When you qualify in a position, you want to start in that position. It's like sometimes a race between all the guys that have penalties. It's not something which is really sexy and exciting. 
Pierre Gasly is set to start his first full Formula 1 season in 2018 and will potentially have his eye on a possible Red Bull seat in the future. But how do you think he will get on next year? Let me know in the comments down below. I will be back soon with more content as always. But in the meantime, don't forget to follow me on social media. Links to Discord, Twitter and Facebook are all in the description down below. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 Word. And until next time, goodbye.